I've got six uncles and five of them have Huntington's disease and any time you went to like a family party, family do or whatever, it wasn't just a, a, an ordinary uncle sitting there, it was just, you know, this man who was sat there like a little bit different and you thought, well, it wasn't like that years ago. So you just think, well, it's just my family and my uncles anyhow. Um, plus me dad as well. That's right. So it's, you know, that's that's how I just sort of see it. It's just sort of the same people. Mm -hmm. When I first got to know Pam, uh, her dad was the only one I did know. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know any of Pam's uncles. And he had suffered an accident many years ago when he fell off a quarry at work and suffered uh, severe brain damage. And um, they didn't expect him to live, but he did pull through it. And consequently, they said that he may relapse to some of the uh, symptoms that he had um, as he got older. And as he got older, these symptoms did take effect. Uh, we just all assumed it was to do with this accident. It was just, well, as Pam had said, when some of her uncles were also experiencing the same symptoms and hadn't fallen off a quarry, that we realised there was something different. Uh, I think Uncle Mick, uh, your, your brother's, uh, your, your dad's next uh, brother, he um, had the test and it was proven to be Huntington's disease. Mm -hmm. And that was the first we ever knew Huntington's disease existed. existed. He was yeah. 30 through my dad when he had that accident. When he had the well, accident, but, yeah. Yeah, he was, it's yeah. Difficult to know whether he had symptoms or not. Yeah. You know, it's just. Yeah, I had heard of Huntington's disease previous to that, although I didn't associate with this family, uh, on a, a storyline on Emmerdale many, many, many years ago. You were first diagnosed with HD in the year 2000, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, you did say that you almost knew before you went because yes. you were having um, symptomatic problems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it was going to be a positive outlook anyhow. It was just no. confirmation of what you thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I think the first time we ever thought of telling both Brad and Mark about HD was uh, we'd been told by one of the genetic consultants that it was a good idea to say possibly before they covered it at secondary school uh, biology science uh, lessons, uh, just so that they didn't have a sudden shock and be told about various symptoms, various things, and then associate it with the mum, the, the granddad, and what have you. So we thought it was a good idea to say well in advance of that so that they would be well prepared and not a bit of a shock. I don't think we had any sort of reservations as such. It was just a case if it was the right time to um, tell Mark and Brad about HD. Um, because we've well, both been of the opinion that... Th the thing is, our, uh, what we used to do was take the, both the kids when they were sort of to like visit Grandad and what have you. And we never ever didn't visit Grandad. Well, it was just Grandad and the way he was in all the different stages of, of, of Huntington's. And I used to sort of, not very often, but just sort of now and again say, well, what you see your granddad with there, I've got that, and I will get that sort of worse, you know, as I get older. And we sort of left it at that in my bed. That's right, it wasn't a case of trying to hide anything. We thought, both of us, that uh, the more information that they have about it, the more they see of it, the more prepared they're going to be uh, uh, later on. But they never ever, ever stopped going to see no, the granddad. No, just sort of, right, you know, no. Right up until Definitely. he went. I think we just brought them both down here and had a chat we with did. them, didn't we? We, we both came down here and we just said, can you come downstairs? We've got something we'd like to discuss. Turned all televisions off and everything. You know, and just had a, mm -hmm. a quick talk about it and mm -hmm. asked them if they had any questions, any uh, any sort of queries, and just being totally open and honest mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. what we knew. You know, if we don't know all the facts ourselves, but what we know and what we've experienced, we thought we'll let them know. And if they have any questions, we'll answer them as honestly and open as possible.
I think the more open they were about it, the easier it was for me and Mark to sort of just take it, if that makes sense. It's like, we sort of just sort of, the way you think of it, when you just get told that openly is, I'm just not gonna let it like interrupt with my life. I'm just gonna live my life as I would. That's what we told you to do, just get on with your life, you know. It's, it's something that you've got to think about, but just put it on the back boiler. Don't let it affect your life. Just get on with whatever you were going to do in the first place. It may not happen. It may happen. You may be knocked down by a bus. You don't know what's round the corner. I do remember the first conversation about HD. Um, it was about three years ago, something like that, when um, I remember my dad saying, you might have noticed certain things about my mum. And I said, yes, I have noticed that, but I never used to take any notice of it. I always used to think that's my mum. Like, I've grown up with it. It was just like, I didn't think anything of it because obviously that I've grown up with it, I've seen it. It's just all of my friends, when they came around, they all just knew my mum as my mum. But um, it, it struck me like, it was like almost as if I was surprised, but not surprised at the same time. Surprised that out of all the things that could happen, it happened to like this family. But um, yeah, I was like not surprised at the same time because you could see what other people, you couldn't see with other people, but you could see with her. So, and uh, basically they were dead open about which I think is the best way. My reaction, like the way I felt once I'd been told I had HD was um, not that bad if I'm completely honest, it was just more of just trying to come to terms with it and facing it, like just t taking it, like not so much thinking that you've got to do something about it yet, more just like right, okay fair enough, I'm going to have to do this either way, it's not going to go. So. I just literally, me and Mark just thought, right, we're going to take this head on. If it goes, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just live your life. That was my initial reaction. I think the topic of being at risk uh, for Brad uh, was all was given at that first sort of um, mm -hmm. discussion of, mm -hmm. about telling him about mm -hmm. HD. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just said that um, there is a 50-50 um, chance that all sort of children of someone who has HD uh, would possibly get it. And I didn't say, so you're at 50% you're at 50 risk of getting it. I, he was at an age where I n knew then that he would put two and two together and then say that he, he, he was at, at risk. We didn't actually say you are at risk, we mm -hmm. just said, you know, there is a 50-50 chance that anybody born from someone who has HD would get it uh, and left it at that. Uh, I think if you tell them it that open as well, it gives them a lot more chance to appreciate it a lot like easier. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, you, if you just discuss all the symptoms and like things about it, that's good, but telling them that they've got a risk, it makes them really just, right, I'm aware of this now, like kind yeah. of thing. But one of the f one of the things you did ask at that point was uh, what sort of um, research or uh, possibility of cures was there. And we were just quite open with that, saying that there isn't a cure at the moment. Uh, there's medication to help some of the symptoms, uh, but they are working hard on trying to to get something sorted out. And every time we've been to our consultant, That's uh, right. uh, we've got the latest news, we've always fed it back to Mark and Brad uh, as to what the latest situation mm -hmm. is with mm -hmm. that and at the moment it is quite positive but uh, as I say fingers crossed we don't know what's round the corner yet, you know it could be just round the corner, it could be a number of years, fingers crossed that's all we can do. The way I felt when I found out I was at risk was basically just if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But if I do, I'm not going to let it do anything. I'm just going to live my life. 
it's me like if anyone like if anyone can't deal with it don't go near me at the same time it's just it's not like anyone has a choice that's the way i look at it it's not like there's anything i can do about it unless i was a doctor <laughs> so yeah it was literally just take it take everything in don't try and argue against it because there's no way it's going to make any difference that's right the more people you tell if they can't deal with it it's their problem not ours. We can't help what the, what the circumstances, but you know, other people, if they don't want to react, react positively towards it, well then it's up to them. You know. That's their problem. It is their problem. Not yeah. ours. Not ours. Well, last night you've had a, a sleepover and all your friends, both Mark and Brad, all the friends sleep over and they get bacon sandwiches and it's right, it's, it's, it's just, just a normal just family. Just a normal family, it is, you know. Uh, and there's some of your friends actually know now, don't they? Like yeah, I, I have told a lot more now, especially with the stair lift in as well, because mm -hmm. now that we've got a stair lift, we can't really hide anything. Mm -hmm. And if there were to ask, I'd just be completely open about it. I wouldn't try and hide anything. We tend to discuss HD as a family after Pam's been to one of her consultations with the geneticist up at uh, the Centre of Life, uh, we usually get feedback from him as to any f new research, any new drugs or anything like that. We also now go to the Huntington's Disease uh, Association support group mm -hmm. uh, with Dee and she gives us information and helpful advice and what mm. have you. We do um, sort of pass anything. And um, we pass all of that back to Brad, Mark and Brad uh, on a regular basis just so that they're mm -hmm. up to date. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've, they've got uh, access to websites and what have you. If they want to go and have a look at them, mm -hmm. they can do. If they don't feel as if they want to at this time, then they don't have to. I think the process of learning about it is more like learning an instrument. Once you know the basics, the, the basics are there, they're going to stick. But once all this, because the research is going so quickly, it's like constantly updates. It's like you're always learning about it. Every time we have this meeting, there's nothing we haven't already gone over. It's always new stuff. and. That's, it's just about building up information and eventually just like, you know, pretty much everything about it until the next update comes. I am glad I was told about HD in the family simply because I don't think it should be kept secret. I think the more open the person telling someone that they're at risk of having it is like, it's just better because they can sort of, it won't catch them off guard or get them in surprise or anything because if they actually do find out of it, eventually, because they will, if they do have it, and thing, the thought process of them like having in their mind will just be like, why didn't my parents tell me, kind of thing. Mm. What, what, why was it such a secret? It's not like I would have been like ashamed of my family because like, I don't think anyone would be because it's not as if it's like their fault really. So that was how I interpreted it. They were about the right age really yeah. when we, yeah. um, you know. I don't think we wanted to tell them when they were too young so they didn't have a, a mm -hmm. basic understanding mm -hmm. of it. We, we, I think we chose the right time to tell them both. Obviously uh, we chose the sort of the youngest one, Brad, uh, for his sort of age, Mark was that little bit older, so he had gone a couple of years mm -hmm. longer before mm -hmm. he knew. Mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted them both to know at the same time, rather than one, one or one, the other, because it might other. have seemed like because, a because it might have seemed, as you say, like a bit of a secret then, and we didn't want that. We wanted them so that they both knew at the same time. Uh, to be perfectly open. So I don't mm -hmm. think we would have done anything different to what we've actually done now. I don't know. I think age is the main part, like, but you've got, if you know your child, which every parent does, it's just, you know how they're going to take it at that age. <coughs> yeah. They've got to be the right age. We knew what was the right time for you <coughs> to do, definitely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, because again, yeah, we're both glad that we've told them. Um, Everything in our lives, we just we face up to them. And, that's right. You know, yeah, that's just you know. It complete. It's a, to me, it's a negative thing to, to sort of not tell. 
you know, your kids and, and something that important mm -hmm. that's going possibly going to affect mm -hmm. them in later life. Mm -hmm. It would have been lovely not to have had to tell them anything like that, mm -hmm. you know, and all the nice things in life. But life's not like that, unfortunately, and it throws all sorts of curve bends at you mm -hmm. that you just got mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely. As a family, I do believe that being open about HD has been very beneficial to this family. Definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just kept everything open, open for discussion, open for questions, uh, no secrets. So you don't have to be on your guard all the time um, in case someone overhears something that they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, uh, you know. It's a lot better with mine and Mark's social life as well. So you can just tell them as opposed to have to sort of leave it for them to notice and it'll be going through their mind and you just don't like you don't like that you want to tell them what it is so they know and they can appreciate it a bit more as opposed to just thinking, Ooh, like what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Like that. That's right. Well we've both we've both said to you and Mark, you know, to uh if you feel you want to tell any of your friends about uh, HD and the involvement this family has, just to go ahead and do it. You know your own friends, which ones to be able to tell things to, which, to ones, say, yeah. which ones you can't. So, you know, no secrets, mm -hmm. you know. It's up to them to deal with it. If they're not happy with it, tough. Mm 